Today's subject is a tough one, especially for me. It is something that I have to check myself out with all the time. And it's the power of non-resistance. You know, in America, we have been brought up to fight for what's right. Be there and get it done. But non-resistance says that's not the best way to handle it. And so these things that we have been taught from the time that we were children are something we have to take a second look at. But you know, it isn't always in whether you're out there on the front line activists saying, come on, we got to fix this. You can fix it in your mind. Our attitudes and our approach to things, other people, is where we can be, truly begin <coughs> the process of non-resistance. not telling you it's easy, because it's not. And it's something that every day I have to kind of slap myself up along the face and say, what are you doing here? This isn't the way it's done. But that's OK. That's OK, because we always need to uh, to be aware of what we're thinking and what we're doing. And you know, you think about resistance right now. Is there any place in this world that there is not violent resistance going on? It's everywhere. And it is not helpful to anyone. And this being Father's Day, we are reminded of all the young fathers who are now serving overseas and risking their life in a resistance effort. You know, even in our town, we find all sorts of stuff going on. People shooting each other and mistreating the elderly. Uh, you know, up in Squaw Valley, uh, two neighbors got into an argument over one neighbor's dogs barking. One neighbor shot the other neighbor. Didn't kill him, but shot him. This is not the way that we create a peaceful, loving world. You can't go around with your fist doubled up all the time and find peace. But what, what do we do? What, what were we instructed to do? You know, uh, I want to talk today about Matthew 5, 38 through 40. And it goes like this. You have heard that it is said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you that you shall not risk resist evil, but whoever strikes you on your right tree cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone wishes to sue you at court and take away your shirt, let him also have your robe. I want to go back a little bit when it says, whoever strikes you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. That is an Aramaic idiom, meaning don't start a fight. That is basically when they said, turn the other cheek, they mean, don't, don't fight. And it, it's a tough saying, and sometimes we feel like it makes us look like Pollyannas. You know, oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. Don't see the real world, don't. But, you know, this is a teaching that has gone on for centuries. In the Tao, they tell the story about the sun shining on the ocean and gathering up the water and creating a cloud. And the cloud is filled with water and it moves over the mountain 
and begins to rain. And as the rain comes down, it pours down the mountainside, and it comes to a huge boulder. Now, is the rain going to say, get out of my way, boulder, I'm coming down, get out? No, the water doesn't do that. It just goes around it and continues on down to the river and back to the ocean where it may be taken up again and create a new cloud. This is how they explain, don't, don't resist. It, this revive, you know, this kind of teaching requires a change in consciousness. As I said earlier, what you think and how you deal with your feelings has a great deal to do with non-resistance. We, uh, we have seen examples of it to a point. Uh, Gandhi and Reverend Martin Luther King with their non-violent approach. They still resisted. They still came out and said, we're not doing the right thing. But they didn't fight. And it requires, requires patience to really do non-resistance, to stand quietly and allow someone to berate you or whatever. It takes a lot of patience and it takes courage. But anger and resentment, feelings of being dismissed as not important, all bring feelings to our mind of getting even. Like, golly, they're not going to do me that way. I'm going to do something that makes them feel bad about what they did. But that's not the way you do it. Remember the story of the woman taken in adultery? There was this woman who had been found in an adulterous situation. And the men of the Jewish community were going to stone her to death because she committed a terrible, terrible crime. And as they were about to stone her, Jesus came along. And they said, Rabbi, we're going to kill this woman because of what she did. And Jesus looked at them quietly and said, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Guess what happened to all those guys? Man, they took off like nobody's business. <laughs> and this is, this is it. Don't resist. And sometimes that's really, really hard. But, and when you hold fast, well, hold on back here. I'm going to go back. Because I've got a good story about non-resistance that I think you will enjoy. And I like telling stories. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, there was a psychologist recently asked about how to deal with fussy kids that didn't like any food, that the every time that there was a meal it was chaos, Mama and Daddy saying, Junior, here, here, eat this little piece of meat. No. Hey, Junior, Junior, have a little vegetables. No. And it goes on and on, back and forth. And finally, the little kid maybe takes a few bites and goes on his way. Well, the psychologist suggested that instead of encouraging this child to eat, that the food be put on the table in bowls. The meat, the salad, the potatoes, each in an individual bowl. And that the child be invited to select whatever it was that he wanted from the bowls for his dinner. Well, now in this case, this little child looked it all over and took a piece of bread and butter. <laughs> He was sitting there waiting for mom and dad to say, oh, you can't eat that, that's not good, you should have this. They didn't. And he ate the bread and butter. Okay. 
came to the end of the meal, and Mom says, we have pie for dessert. Would you like some? Vinny's eyes really got big. I didn't eat any good stuff, and they're going to let me have dessert? Yeah. And it went on that way at every meal for a couple of days. And the little kid began getting more and more agitated because Mother was putting out these beautiful meals like pot roast and roasted chicken. And so finally, one night he says, What's with you guys? You're trying to make me sick or something? And the mother said, no. But you're not telling me to eat? No. But you're welcome to have anything that's here on the table. I can have some chicken? Of course you can. And mashed potatoes? Yes, if you love me. And then the little kid was really confused. But he was also hungry. So it didn't take him any time to collect a slice of chicken and some mashed potatoes. And you know, interestingly, from there on out, he never objected to the food that was offered him. But as long as mom and dad kept controlling and giving him that attention, he was going to keep it going because it felt pretty good when it stopped because they no longer resisted. He changed the way he did things. And so this is the way that we change. You know, there's also the story I've told you time and again about the, the lady that went to Catherine Ponder and was just, she had a list this long of the terrible things her husband did and she was ready to divorce him. And Catherine said to her, make a list of all the good things he does and concentrate on that for a week and come back to see me. You know what? Within a week that man had changed 110%. How'd that happen? non-resistance, looking at the good and appreciating it. You know, we all are inclined, and of course we have been taught previous community that there were special universal laws that you shall not do this and you shall not do that or you're going to you know where. And so these people, these are beliefs and because there is a threat behind them of punishment, they hold fast to their beliefs. But when you come to unity, you are urged to look within, to know yourself, to know what is right and what is wrong for you. And you know what? What's right for, Tor for Lori might not be right me. And the same is true with Eddie. We each have our own path to follow. And all of the paths lead to the mountaintop of enlightenment. And how we get there is our business, not a minister's business. So don't resist. Know that God within is your guide. And that's the way you go. Be open to change. You know, the one thing that religious people are inclined to be is self-righteous. I go to church every Sunday and I pray and I this and you don't do those things and you're not good. And, and as they are self-righteous, they seem to think they have the right to judge. We say, no, you don't. No, you don't. It's none of your business. You don't have the right to judge. And the other thing that they are inclined to be is spiritual pride. I am a da-da. 
whatever they want it to be. And that makes me right with God and right with everything because I am a whatever. We don't have that right. We don't even have that right as unity. We know that we can find the way that we will be shown the way and we have to continue to look for it. We don't stop working simply because we have discovered God. That's just the beginning. That's just the beginning of what we need to do and be. Do not look for revenge. And you know, that's what a lot of, of the war in the Middle East is about is revenge. These Christians, da, 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 the Muslims are going to get them. They have been mistreated and they're going to get the mistreaters. But that answers nothing. I have wondered what would happen on our school grounds if a bully started in on a child and the child stood there quietly and looked at them and turned and walked away. I think everybody would be left kind of restless. The only way that the, the bully gets powered is if you resist. That's the only way he gets power. He cannot get power otherwise. And so, and to resist gives power to the others. And, you know, I mean, we see that in the war on drugs. President Bush started the war on drugs. I think we've got more drugs in this country now than we had when he began the war. If the war is in the title, walk away. Because war is resistance. So I brought along a couple of metaphysicians to back my story today. And that is primarily because I struggle with it so much myself. That I am I am standing up here convincing myself as much as I'm trying to convince you that the way to live <coughs> is to be non-resistant. Here is something from Daily Word. Yes, my friend, I know your friends are urgent. You feel a need to quickly get away from a disagreeable person, the emotionally battering circumstance, the unfair situation. I understand and know how you feel. And I assure you that the most effective prayer is one of non-resistance. I have all the resources I need. Just standing there quietly and saying, I have all the resources I need. You know, we go around doing let go and let God. That's what non-resistance is. You don't have to do it. Just talk to God. Let him do it. Her, it. I also like Emmett Fox. He goes back a long ways. And he says, if you are unhappy in your work or in your home, do not resist these conditions mentally or indulge in grumbling or self-pity or in recriminations of any kind. Such action will only strengthen that particular embodiment of air. So resist not evil. Feel out mentally for the presence of the divine spirit all around you and affirm its actuality. Resist not and be happy. And so it is. And so it is. <laughs>